This might be one of the craziest shows I've ever seen. This is my review of the Baby Clock Tour, featuring Baby Metal and Death Clock. But unlike my written review, which will appear in Metal Digest, that will focus solely on reviewing the show, in this video, I'm going to bring you backstage with me and talk about the requirements that both the bands and the venue had in order for me to photograph the show. Welcome metalheads, I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbas. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's Riff of the Week. It was my privilege to get a photo pass in order to cover the Baby Metal and Death Clock concert representing Metal Digest, and here I'm going to tell you all about it. So I arrived at the Coca-Cola Roxy, which is in the beautiful Battery area of Atlanta. I walk up to the box office and they've already got a ticket there waiting for me, which made me feel really special. And then I met with the venue's marketing guy who corralled me and the other journalists that were there to cover the show that night so he could give us the rundown on the rules and the regulations of the show that night. And I was pretty shocked at what he told me. It's pretty normal for concert photography gigs to have certain restrictions in place. It's pretty standard that the photographers are only allowed in the photo pit to shoot the first three songs of a band set. And then usually we just go out into the audience and enjoy the rest of the set before the next band goes on. But this venue would not allow any cameras in the building outside of when the approved songs are to be shot. We were told that if we wanted to watch the rest of the band set, we would have to put our cameras in our cars and then we would be allowed back into the building to enjoy the rest of the set. And then between sets, we would have to go back to our cars to get our cameras so we could shoot the next band. That was really crazy to me. I, I, I wish that, you know, my escort could have just stood next to me and like slapped my wrist with a ruler or something if I attempted to take a photograph outside of the approved songs, but that wasn't to be. And right here, I need to make it very clear. This wasn't the marketing guy's rules. This wasn't my handler's rules. Everybody at the venue was super nice to me. They were very accommodating very much willing to help me get whatever I needed to do my job. It was just the venue's policy. But that wasn't the only new challenge I would face as a concert photographer. I was also instructed that Death Clock's requirements were for only what's called, quote, front of the house shooting, which means the photographers were not allowed in the photo pit in front of the band. Instead, we had a designated area right by where the sound guys work, out in the middle of the audience where there's that barricade where the sound guys and all their mixers are. We had a designated spot right there and that's where we were to shoot the band from. Now I'm told that this is not an uncommon restriction and I have a theory on why Death Clock wanted their photography to be done this way and I will get into that once we get to the Death Clock part of this story. But they weren't the only band with their own additional requirements. Baby Metal had restrictions for their set as well. I'll get to Baby Metal's requirements when we get to that part of the story, but let's go ahead and start talking about the show itself. It was opened up by Jason Richardson. Now you might know him from Born of Osiris, Chelsea Grin, and now he's a guitar player for All That Remains. For this tour, he was out supporting his solo work as an instrumentalist. My man's got chops. Now, it's probably obvious that if he used to be in Born of Osiris, he must be a good guitar player. But as a solo artist, he gets to much more display his skills than he does in, say, playing All That Remains. As a solo artist, his music was very progressive and shreddy and there was fireworks. There was just so much explosive technical playing. I was very impressed. But then after the third song, I was escorted out of the building by my handler. I still think that that's pretty weird, but I made the most of it. Because you see, there was another photographer there covering the show who was also 
at the Rotting Christ show that I covered. We both covered that show, so we recognized each other. We started talking, and when we were outside the building in the Battery area of Atlanta, you can have open containers. So I bought him a beer, and I just used that as an opportunity to ask him a million questions to try to learn more and get better as a concert photographer. And then the damnedest, most unexpected thing happened. As we were walking back towards the venue, Coming right at us, walking down the street, was Bran, the drummer from Mastodon. It all happened so fast, and that was definitely not what I was expecting to happen that night. I just stood there in the street with my mouth agape, pointing, and I could tell that he knew that I recognized him, so he just walked up, gave me a fist bump, and then walked right into the venue. It happened so fast, I wish I would have thought to like ask for a selfie or something, but then again, maybe it's for the best because it's obvious he was going into the show and probably didn't want to be delayed. And then not long after, right before Death Clock set, we were escorted back into the building and taken to our designated area by the sound guys. I haven't talked to Brendan, so I don't know the exact real reason why they wanted only front of house photography, but... I've got a good theory now that I've seen their show. You see, when Death Clock is playing live, the real band members, you really can only see their silhouettes. The light comes from behind them. You can only see their outlines. And then on a big screen behind them, animations of Metalocalypse plays. And it's not just rehashed scenes from the show either. It was really cool because these are brand new animations, not just ripped from the show. In fact, the set started with a brand new tribunal scene. And then there was a scene with Charles Oftenson who was getting the crowd hyped up before the band started. So that's my theory. I think the reason why Brendan wanted only front of the house shooting is because he wanted the focus to be on the cartoon members of Death Clock and not the real life members. And you know, as much as I enjoyed these new animations, the band was what I was actually there for, and they sounded great. Brendan's voice sounded excellent. Now I know what it would sound like to hear Nathan Explosion live. And his guitar tone was impeccable. I was already impressed, but now that I've seen him live, I am blown away with Brendan Small as a musician. As you can tell, I'm a big fan and I really thought about taking my camera to my car so that I could watch the rest of the Death Clock set, but I would have missed a lot of the set anyway just walking to my car and then I would have had to walk back to my car to get my camera again to do baby metal and I'm there for a job. It was a big hassle, so once again, I was escorted out of the building. Like I said, I've got a job to do. I'm here to cover baby metal as well, so I waited outside with my camera and it wasn't very long before I was brought back in. As I alluded to earlier, baby metal had their own restrictions as well. Instead of the customary first three songs, they required that photography only be taken between songs four through eight. We were allowed in the photo pit for them, but I don't know why that restriction was different. This time, our handler brought us into the building before their set started, and he had us gather in the wings beside the stage, and he just watched us to make sure that we weren't shooting when we weren't supposed to be. Now, why couldn't he have done that the whole night? I don't know, but I'm glad he at least did for this one, because I've seen a lot of metal shows in my day, but I've never seen anything like this. When Baby Metal took the stage, that Atlanta audience went nuts. Like I said, I've seen a lot of high energy shows, but you know, there's usually like an ebb and flow to these things. You can't really have the audience cranked to 11 the whole time, unless you're baby metal, I guess. It reminded me of that meme of that group of people in the bar reacting to when Arya killed the Night King in Game of Thrones. Spoilers! I've been to a lot of metal shows and I've seen some serious crowd energy, but I've never seen anything like that. It wasn't like they were just 
happy to see a band that they like. It wasn't like, oh boy, we get to headbang and have a good time tonight. This, for the first time live, I got to see what it's like when a super fan sees a mega pop star in the flesh. I can only imagine that this must be what it's like in the front row when Taylor Swift comes out. Now, obviously, on a much smaller scale, but those kids went insane. It was a frenzy of bodies. It was like the churning of the ocean in a storm. And the whole time, it's just high energy and bright flashing lights. The backing band was playing like, you know, of course, really great metal riffs. But in front, you got the girls with this choreographed dance routine, and they were completely matching the crowd's energy. It was just like what you would see at a pop show, except for instead of a backing track, you've got a real band, and the choreographed dancing had much more energy and enthusiasm. And then right before I was about to be escorted into the photo pit to do my job, Brand walked by again and he went straight to the backstage area. I assume he must have been going back there to hang with the boys in Death Clock. That was surreal, but I've got a job to do. So into the pit I go and that was an extremely challenging shoot. You know, most of the time metal bands, they don't choreograph their moves on stage. They just kind of do what they feel in the moment, which is usually, you know, headbanging. But these girls were running all over the stage and doing a choreographed dance with corresponding lights that went with the music. And each thing was tailored to each individual song and each movement of the song. It was a spectacle. Say what you want about baby metal, but that group has cardio for days. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, right about now, you might have noticed that I showed pictures of the previous bands that I shot, but not of baby metal. And there's the other requirement that I alluded to. They didn't just require that I only shoot songs four through eight, but they also required that I submit my photos to their people and that the photos that they approve, I could publish. Well, the show is Sunday. I spent all day sorting and editing the photos on Monday, and the podcast comes out every Tuesday. So obviously, that hasn't been enough time. I haven't gotten approval back from their people in order to publish the photos. So this is what we're going to do. As soon as I get the approval from their people, my written review will be published in Metal Digest, which will focus exclusively on reviewing the show and not my experience as a journalist. And I will post a link to that in the community tab of this YouTube channel. And if you're subscribed, hint, hint, you will see it in your YouTube feed. And if you're not subscribed to Heavy Metal Philosophy YouTube, don't worry, there's another way. If you're an audio only listener, all the links to my social media will be in the description. Just follow me on one of those sites and I'll also post the links there. No problemo. So now let's talk about the riff of the week. And in honor of finally seeing Death Clock, one of my favorite bands live, let's pick this week a song off of their latest album, Death Album 4. We're gonna pick SOS as the riff of the week. And don't forget, we also did a review of the Metalocalypse movie, Army of the Doomstar. If you're on YouTube, all you gotta do is click right here to catch that one. If you're audio only, links in the description, but most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal, I love you. Yeah.